What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is the monologue. I am your host, Team Doom. Is coming to you live from PrimoSounds.com, the number one internet radio station in the world, in the whole motherfucking world, man. At least, at least you're trying to make it that way. Uh, 24 hour, seven days a week content, man. It's always something going on. We got DJ sets, uh, talk shows. Uh, podcast we have just dope ass music man none of that radio station music either man where they play drake 20 times in a row and you fucking tired of that shit no 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 man you get to see uh the the large range man it's a bunch of dope music out there that radio doesn't put out we put it out though and we here for you man so give it a tune man i mean tune into it once in a while um like i said 24 hours a day seven days a week so it doesn't matter where you live in it where you stay in it what time it is you can always just tune in man get a little entertainment you can find my show on there uh live at 8 a.m pacific standard time on a sunday it'll be five o'clock p.m uh sunday in germany uh so set your time set, set your uh watch, watches accordingly uh, if you can't catch it there live, youtube.com, uh, just go to the search bar, type in Team Doom, it's my channel will pop up. Just click on it, man, and you can catch uh, the shows after that. They should be up uh, right after uh, it, uh, right after it's on live, I'm trying to say. But uh, even if not right after, but it'll be sometime after that same day. It airs live on primosounds.com. You can find it on YouTube. Um, a lot of times people come to me like, hey, yo, Timo, man, I'm trying to fucking find your show when you put it up, when you put it up. You ain't got to ask me all that, dude. All you got to do is go and subscribe to my channel. And then once a new uh, show comes up, uh, you will get an alert for it. And then you can tune in then. So you ain't got to be refreshing my Facebook or fucking hit me up, ask me when the show is about to come out, dude. Just subscribe to YouTube and they'll tell you. I also uh, let you guys know on all of my social media pages when my show is coming out. Uh, it's uh, Twitter and Instagram at Long Live the Team, Facebook.com slash Team Dumas. Uh, so, hey, even Snapchat.com, uh, International Team, too. Shout out to Snapchat, man. Snapchat's going public, by the way. In a minute, you can uh, buy, and sell snocks on, buy and sell stocks on Snapchat. And, uh, yeah, man, it, it might be a good venture. might not be. It's a uh, app that started off from being able to send and receive nudes without a without fear of uh, the nudes being shared or screenshot years later. And now they're a social media giant up there with the, well, they're not really up there on Facebook and Instagram, but they got their own lane, man. And they're sitting, and they're sitting into it real nice. The lane's so cool that Instagram is trying to become, like have a Snapchat part of it, but fucking Instagram stories suck, dude. They're nowhere near as good as Snapchat. Snapchat's where it's at, so. Shout out to Snapchat, man. International team, uh, if you want to uh, follow me on Snapchat, see what the fuck I be doing with my life, you know what I'm saying? Just follow me there. Uh, about to get right into it. Uh, but hold on, hold on. Uh, before we do, uh, shout out to uh, Daniel Hernandez and Theo Summers, man. It was on my show last week. Uh, I did a little uh, mistake when I was recording the audio, and uh, when that came out, I had like a little uh, echo to my voice. But I still think it was a good show. Uh, otherwise, um, I've heard nothing but good things about it. It was very entertaining, so uh, go back and give that show a listen. Uh, it's the one uh, last week. Uh, so, yeah, sh shout out to them. Uh, I'm going to have more guests on my show as time goes on. So, we'll see where this goes, man. I got a bunch of ideas about guests, and I'm probably going to have uh, uh, Her uh, Hernandez and Theo on the show again. So, yeah, uh, my mom actually uh, called me yesterday, told me she listened to the show, uh, her and my grandmother tried. I think they started on episode zero, Trump, and uh, it's the episode where I was talking about Tiana Trump. You can't find that on my YouTube channel, by the way. You have to go to the Primo Silence YouTube channel. That was episode zero. That's not just do some shit together to see if I can uh, do this or not. So, YouTube.com, uh, search bar, Primo Sounds. It'll be up there. Uh, I think uh, Primo Sounds, uh, they called the episode trump gives head uh but i called it uh <laughs> i just called it trump you know what i'm saying so uh listen to it there and there's a part on the uh show where i was talking about you know because tiana trump she's a porn star she just got in jail around it. she just got out of jail around that time and um you know she's pretty much famous for, for sucking dick like you know she sucks dick on snapchat all the time and she's a fucking like her head game is mean and i said that the there's a point that you know your relationship reached the next level when a woman chooses your dick over oxygen. 
And I think that was a little bit too much for uh, both my mom and my grandma. But shout out to them for even giving the show a chance, man. Uh, you know, she, uh, my mom did tell me about 10, 12 years ago to, to, to do this, you know, because I went to her a long time ago saying I wanted to get into the entertainment business or, you know, try to get into comedy a little bit. And she told me, you know, just make a little YouTube channel and tell jokes on it. And I was like, Mom, like, that's not fucking, that, that's a terrible idea. Now, this is like 10, 12 years ago before people was like really doing that like that. Before YouTube was just used for music and like America's Funniest Home Videos type shit. You know what I'm saying? But now people, you know, made a bag off of YouTube, uh, you know, telling jokes on this shit. So I should have listened to her. Maybe I'd be in a you know, better position if I... Honestly, if I listen to half the shit my mom told me to uh, to do, I'd probably be a multi-millionaire by now. But, hey, still love her with all my heart. Shout out to my mom. You know, if you're lucky to have a uh, a mom, you know, that's a, you know, a good mom that's, like, there for you and stuff like that, you go ahead and listen to them, man. They have nothing but uh, good advice to pass on. So, about to just hop right on into it, man. Uh, like I said, it's fe- still February, still Black History Month. It's Valentine's Day weekend, so it's kind of like what a time to be alive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this week's Black History Month, I'm about to hit y'all with, because people just pretty much uh, listen to, you know, Martin and Malcolm the whole time. Well, I should say learn about Martin and Malcolm the whole time, or maybe Rosa Parks. You got to expand your knowledge, man. It's more black history than that. So uh, this moment in black history, you know, just pretend like uh, I had like a, a sound bite that said this moment in black history before I said so. So, so this moment in black history on uh, April 26, 1995, uh, Felicia asked Smokey to borrow his car. While normal black people asked to borrow sugar, even ketchup, Felicia took the extra mile and asked him to borrow his car. Today we have a phrase to honor this brave woman. It is called, by Felicia. So next time you hear someone use the phrase, by Felicia, you know, uh, let them know where it came from. I think a lot of people just heard it on social media and they think it's something funny to say. No, that is a part of black history, black culture. So let them know, man. Uh, That all... Uh, started from the crackhead Felicia all Friday. So, know your history, know your worth, man. Uh, this weekend, Valentine's Day weekend, man. Uh, I think that it's good that Valentine's Day is on uh, Tuesday because uh, you can celebrate with your side piece during this weekend, your main piece on uh, Valentine's Day. And uh, hey, men and women both have side pieces too. So, dudes, just because you out there, you know, you – you laughing and shit, thinking it's funny. You might be somebody's side piece on motherfucking Saturday, too. You know what I'm saying? While, you know, she's like, uh, you know, her man on Tuesday is getting a real Valentine's Day gift. You know what I'm saying? You getting like the little, little, little pre-sex. You know what I'm saying? She about to practice on you, but she about to motherfucking unload the whole show on her man on Tuesday. So, hey. But some people happy with that. You know what I'm saying? Take it how you live. Um, and I'm not really mad with people who, you know, who happy with that. Because everyone knows that around Valentine's Day, pussy is the motherfucking wettest, man. If pussy was a fruit, dude, Valentine's Day, it'll be as motherfucking juicy as the all you mean. Around this time, if pussy was on the fucking tree, you fucking go grab the pussy off the tree, bite into it. Juice is rolling down your cheeks, rolling down your chin. It's just, it's just an amazing thing. It really, really is. And it just fucking, it fills my heart with joy to just know of all the motherfucking Valentine's Day pussy that's going on right now. All the Valentine's Day sex happening right now. Go ahead, get you some, dog. Go ahead, get you some. Just do it responsibly. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you pull out. You know what I'm saying? And then come where she asks you to come. You know what I'm saying? Don't just motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? If, if y'all have an understanding that you can just come where you want to come, go ahead. But, you know, it, it's Valentine's Day. You at least have to do, give her the heads up. You know what I'm saying? That, hey, I'm about to come on your face. You know what I'm saying? She probably cool with that. You know what I'm saying? But at least give her the motherfucking heads up. You know what I'm saying? And if you get in her weave, try to help her get it out. You know what I'm saying? Don't just sit back on the bed and laugh at her when she when, when you get some fucking cum in her weave. Help her get it out. You know what I'm saying? Run to the bathroom with her. Get the motherfucking, you know, uh, get the water, get the brush. Help her get that motherfucking cum out of her weave. Because she probably got that weave for you, man, to look extra special. You just fucking bust a fat ass nut in it. Don't laugh at her around Valentine's Day, man. Everybody got to do their part and fucking help out around this time. Uh, it's just a special occasion, dude. Uh, Valentine's Day, like, I love it. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 the, it's the holiday for love. And uh, don't let nobody run your parade. It's a bunch of miserable motherfuckers sitting at home right now. Like, God damn, I wish I had a motherfucking Valentine's. So I'm about to hate on everyone that I see on social media posting about how they in love and blah, blah, blah. Don't let that shit get to you. Uh, 
do you on Valentine's Day? Whether you somebody's main, whether you somebody's side, whether you got money to blow, whether you don't, doesn't matter, man. This weekend is motherfucking for you. Uh, so try to have the best you can. Uh, speaking of Valentine's Day, uh, the homie R and B legend motherfucking Trey Songs is getting his own uh love reality whatever the fuck you want to call that bullshit show on VH1, which kind of uh. It's some bullshit. Like Trey Songz can get pussy, dude. So I don't know why. I don't know why they give him his own, you know, reality love show. I mean, I know why they are doing it because this is about to be the most ratchet shit to ever even come across VH1 in the history of motherfucking television, right here, dude. Because um, if y'all don't know, years and years and years ago on uh, VH1, uh, they started off the ratchetness with the uh, Flavor Flav. He was a hype man for uh, the '80s uh, rap group Public Enemy, uh, known for selling, known for yelling uh, "Yeah, boy" into a microphone, uh, wearing big ass motherfucking clocks uh, like chains around his neck, and pretty much looking like a motherfucking roach, dude. He's like, you know, short dude, look like a burnt match, and he was old at the time. They decided for this whole reality show thing too, so. Shout out to him, though, because he still was able to get up on a bunch of bad bitches. Um, they took the uh, reality. I mean, the reality show took the uh, Instagram models of its time because now, now Instagram models, they can make money selling skinny tees and motherfucking teeth whitening and, you know, fashion over dresses and shit. You no, know, because they got a fat ass. So they got followers. So they show their fat ass off in those jeans or they have a small waist. And like, hey, I got the small waist by drinking this tea so they can sell money like that. But it wasn't like that back in the day. Hoes back in the day had to work for their motherfucking money, dude. Whether it was being in, in in videos, barely getting paid for it. They had to find a rapper or a fucking ball player to latch on to. Hopefully, they get cashed out. But hoes got it easy nowadays. But back in the day, hoes didn't have it easy. You know what I'm saying? So they had to do things like go on motherfucking Flavor of Love for 15 minutes of fame in order to, you know, get a little bread out here. So... Y'all hoes, nah, y'all better pay homage to these old hoes, dude. Like, they paved the way. So, anyway, they really much, uh, they got all these uh, Instagram hoes of their time to be in a mansion and fight over Flavor Flav. And it was, like, the biggest train wreck you can motherfucking see, man. Women were getting shouting matches, getting spit on, hitting each other. All for Flavor Flav. And uh, the show was so ratchet that it ended up getting a sequel, Flavor Love too. Where they pretty much just turned it up. They got women with bigger personalities to just fucking act like a motherfucking fool on camera. And then the foolery didn't stop there. They just have, kept having spinoff after spinoff. Uh, one of the women on Flavor Love 2 New York, she got her own show. It was a couple fucking ambiguously gay dudes from New York show. They got their own motherfucking show. Real chance of love. You know what I'm saying? So it keeps on going. But they moved away from that. And they start going to the whole reality shit. Love and hip hop. All that fucking bullshit. That people watch for some strange reason. So now Trey Songs is getting his own show. And um, I am very fearful uh, for this show. I am fearful for the lives of the women on this show. Uh, because women were fighting over Flavor Flav. Like fist fighting. Like, you know, clawing, scratching. So if that's the case, I believe that someone might die over Trey Songs, dude. Like, I, I, And there might be a body catched on motherfucking television because women will fight women will fight over trey songs in the club you know what i'm saying so i can only imagine how they about to turn it up when the motherfuckers camera well when, when the cameras are rolling and vh1 in their ear talking about some turn up turn up turn up you know if you want to make some money if you want to come back you got to turn up so this is about to be a tragedy waiting to happen this is about to just be a fucking like a fire on the side of the road dude it's about to be a, a car accident you know what i'm saying like i don't like i i, I hope no one gets hurt but I kind of want to see it. You know what I'm saying? I really kind of want to see it. Um, They should just, I don't know why they gave, you know, the, the thing that gave the other uh reality reality love shows its uh thing was like, you can't believe these motherfuckers are fighting over this dude. You know what I'm saying? That's what made Flavor Love good. That's what made New York good. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, this person obviously is a train wreck and there's people fighting to be with this fucking train wreck. Like, that's what made it a, a, a little luring. But Trey Songz can get hoes. I'm sure that Trey Songz got hoes right now. So, you know, whatever, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure they could have found somebody else. But uh, but hopefully Trey Songz, I don't know. Does that mean Trey Songz's career coming to an end? Because you don't see motherfuckers that's really out here still pushing records, still going on tour, still making that guap. And they don't, you know, VH1 doing the 
uh, reality shit. Like, like Ray J did a uh, fucking, you know, For the Love of Ray J, I think it was called. And, that, and Ray J never really did anything. He never really had a career. Like, his career was, was fucking Kim K. Like, that was his whole career. And he had a couple bullshit-ass songs. But, I mean, he was the one famous for putting, for putting Kim K on. So, I don't know, man. Shout out to homie Trey Songs, though. Hope you find some love on this television show. And uh, if you don't find love, then fuck it, man. Uh, hey, next best thing, man, whatever. Uh, if you saw my um, – close it up with this. Um, If you saw my show uh, or heard my show, I should say, last week, you would know that I picked the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. And they did just that. Um, I wasn't convinced in the first half because it really wasn't looking that good, man. It really, really wasn't uh, – Tom Brady was just mean material, dude. Like, crying Jordan face the whole time. People were having a field day. It was a, a picture of uh, Tom Brady in front of his locker. And in that locker, he had a uh, Donald Trump Make America Great Again hat. And uh, people were going off, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he's a Trump supporter. Motherfuckers want to see him lose, blah, blah, blah. But Tom Brady, just like Donald Trump, came back in the second half and motherfucking whooped that motherfucking ass, dude. Like... He uh, came back, made one, actually the most, uh, the the biggest comeback Super Bowl history, I think it was. Yeah, the biggest comeback Super Bowl history, man. So, uh, hey, I just uh, take 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 that just like life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the first half of your life might, might not be going so well, uh, whether it be your love life, your financial life, your actual life, your spiritual life, whatever it is, man. The first half might not be going so well. But there's all, always more time on the clock, man. You always got time to come back. Always got time to bounce back. All you need is a little perseverance, uh, a little confidence uh, to just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Keep trying and make it happen, dude. So shout out to New England Patriots for their ring. They have uh, two players on their team. I forgot their names, but they got two players on their team that's not going to see Donald Trump at the White House and people, you know, going crazy over that. But that's a motherfucking choice. If you don't want to go to the White House, you ain't got to go. I don't see the big deal. Tom Brady didn't go see Obama win. You know, he won the Super Bowl, so fuck it. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you don't want to go to the uh, White House to see the president, did I say? I, I, I'm i pretty sure I said Tom Brady didn't go, didn't go to the White House to see Obama yet. So, uh, hey, that's it. That's all I got this week. Um, Like I said, make sure you go to the – make sure you listen to it live on PrimoSounds.com. 8 a.m. every Sunday, uh, YouTube.com. Hit that search bar. Type in Team Doomish. You can find it there. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the viewership. You know what I'm saying? I, I really, really do. I notice everything. I see all out there supporting my show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I will see you guys uh, next week. Peace.